Well, let's turn over here to excuse me, the 16th chapter. Let's start here before we go. Now we have a need of a knowledge of the symbols as we go through here, since we're not going to spend really that much time in this. But we will want to answer the symbol for those that may not be aware, aware of what it is. I mean, the pouring out of the vials upon false religion. And we have to be careful that we do not be particular, is what my thought is tonight, of those things which are contrary to good doctrine. No matter what fact tonight, what's going on? Now wait. Just to remind that as I was in the back of the church for the morning service, and I'm going to tell you the traffic was something. Too much going in and out when we have a break between services so you can take care of that. Whatever you need to do, I'm sure we don't need 20 folks leaving between 11 and the time the service lets out. It's too much. Now, if you feel like you're free, just get weary and go up and get up and take a walk, you'll be doing it. But we want you to do that. We want you to do that. Just bear with it, because if you go to hell, you'll have to bear with it. If you go down there, there won't be no hour for you can go out and take a break and get a drink. Right, and of all times to travel, don't travel so much during the Word unless you need to. All right, it seems like seeing the song service all the time, but offering you folks get up and leave. All right. Just a word to the wise, but we have to keep order. We have to keep order. If we get careless, we'll have the same thing that we complain about in other congregations, other churches, Babylon. So if we have to go out, we just have to go out. That's all there is to it. But if we feel like going out, that's not the thing that we want to cater to. Feelings. Amen. So let us help. And when we watch the traffic, some complain, oh, there's so much going in and out, but I can't concentrate on what's going on. So it checks who it is. And sometimes you got the same people going out two, three times. And if everybody goes out once, can you see what's going to happen? <laughs> so just getting up, getting up and going. Just weary from sitting, but I just don't let that get us down because we're in a battle. All right, so the Lord help us. We need to go. We don't want to take away that liberty or of age, the children. Sometimes they want to go and they don't really need to go, but that's your determination. Between the services, let's take care of all the necessary going. Amen. If something becomes necessary after that, well, let's get it. All right, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. All right, the sixth angel poured out his vial. His vial is the wrath of God. And that God expects the wrath to be poured out on all false worship. And that we're not getting to the place where we're in the place where people feel like that they just the cost in the church of God's congregation, that they're free uh, to do what they want to do. But in the Church of God Foundation, we have to keep the doctrine of the Church of God. Just push it down hard, man. You want it off on? Oh, All right, just push it hard. It'll come on, baby. That's right. The resolution, take it put off. There you go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes it is a problem getting the light on, and we only get the light on. Praise God in the church of the same because we're in a church of God congregation doesn't mean we're a church of God. Our attitudes can change while we're here and we'll find ourselves something other than church of God. I and mean, we can sit right here in the midst right here and backslide or switch over, and that'll be backsliding, to another religion. I mean, to another faith, to another attitude. That's why right, we can sit right here and find ourselves kicking against the truth. We can find ourselves taking an attitude against what is right. And then the glory concerning the truth, it does not move you anymore. You used to uh, shout in it, but all of a sudden you're grown dull in your senses, and you feel like that this is just too much effort to make. We're going to have to get past the place where we feel like just sitting going to get it. And then we're going to have to do some praying, and some further praying for ourselves and for our attitudes, that we'll be just what God would have us to be. 
And then we're going to read after a while about the people that didn't know that they was back and out of the way. And we're not talking about the lay of the sea, and that's us. That's the spirit that's among us. To make us feel like we have needed nothing, we're doing all right, let's just wait till the Lord comes. That's the uh, attribute that, uh, uh, shall we say, tempt them in the seventh field. All our lay of the sea is church. And we don't need that way. But he says the sixth thing is pouring out his vial. And the only thing going to keep the saints encouraged and strengthened to go forth is pouring out of the vial. That is the wrath of God which is found in the word. Amen. You got to have it. You got to have it. Some say, well, that's coarse and it's hard and it's hard. But without it, you're not going to stand. Without it, you're not going to see the need of standing. The reason that the false churches and the uh, lukewarm uh, folks who call themselves holy churches around today is because of wrath of God is not being poured out. Following God's judgment in the earth, the word said the people learn righteousness. And if you're not doing right, it's because you're not accepting the judgment. That's right. And when the judgments are preached and you consider, or it's not to say you persist in doing what you're doing, it's because the judgment don't fear, don't fear you, they don't, they, don't, they don't scare you. I mean, they don't frighten you. I mean, you don't fear God as the scripture says, fear God and give him the glory. They claim to pour out the wrath of the sixth field ministry. And if someone worried about this, or uh, uh, concerning what it is, the sixth field ministry, you know, right? But here, the county of the Philadelphia age. And that began in 1880 and wound up approximately 1930, and these are, of course, approximate dates. But now, since then, there was a great silence in heaven, and the judgment cut off, and a lot of apostasy and compromise, and things that are not church of God was entered into so-called church of God doctrine. Therefore, it takes the trumpet blowing the air, crying aloud and spraying out and blowing out the vials, burning up all the hay and stubble that has gotten into our worship, I and mean, that has caused us to fall short of the glory of God. And some are questioning this morning, why aren't souls getting saved? They're not getting saved, Jesus, because God is not uh, saving them. And you say, well, why is God not saving them? I don't could, no, I could not tell you because it would take a long, thick book, amen, to tell all the things that would hinder God in doing the work that he'd like to do. I cannot tell you why Protestantism was like it was. I cannot tell you why Protestantism, uh, shall we say, Roman Catholicism was allowed to stand. It seems to me that it should have been chopped down from the beginning. It seems to me that the flame should have been set from it from the beginning. But men's hearts, men's attitudes were such that they did not hearken. Amen. To the sound of the second trumpet and the mountain went into the sea. And they went down. They didn't want to hearken. God let them go down. All right. So the same thing can apply to us. If we will worship God lukewarmly, if we will be slack in our worship, if we will be careless in the things that uh, we're uh, supposed to be doing, if we are uninterested in prayer, if we are the thought that I'd rather go somewhere and support and have a good time than to worship God, then the same thing can happen in our case. God will not forbid us to backslide if we won't do it. Amen. God will not forbid us to resist the Spirit if we determine to do it. And so why aren't people getting saved? We're saved by the Spirit and folks resisting the Spirit. I'm just as sure God can save today as he always did. I'm sure God can save... 3,000 souls out there today if he wanted to. I'm sure he can save, uh, uh, I believe there's 5,000 souls in things that need to be saved. I believe he can save 5,000 in a day if he wanted to do. But people's hearts. Don't you remember while those 3,000, those 5,000 getting saved, there was the other standing around with an attitude of, so what? What is this stuff? And they didn't get saved. Everybody in Jerusalem wasn't saved. If it was the cost, they wouldn't have been persecuted and driven out of Jerusalem. But it's the condition of men's hearts. And today, because of so much religion, folks have hardened their hearts that they feel like God, amen, is going to pet them. They're going to be something special for God in spite of the rebellion and in spite of the lukewarmness. So we're not going to be God if we won't be God. We're not going to be the church of God if we can't embrace the church of God doctrine. If we cannot take the sacrifice of the church of God, we're not going to be church of God. If we cannot deny ourselves as we're supposed to be, we're not going to be church of God. If we feel like we can do whatever comes to our mind, and we'll justify it in our mind, we're not going to be church of God. Amen. We take the attitude that we can just do what we please, that we'll do it if we want to do it, there's nobody's business, then we're not going to be church of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to be like the rest of the church that takes of the so-called churches around. Amen. It's going to take a special effort if we're going to stay safe. It's going to take a, a special effort if our light is going to shine. 
If we're a run of the mill, just common as other folks are, then that's what will be considered, and our effect will be common as others are. Well, you know what? We'll have to get folks to get us a church book to sign so we can get some folks in the congregation, because salvation will be a pre uh, not a premium anymore. We will not lift that up anymore. But today, it didn't happen yet, as far as I'm concerned. You're not saved, you're not church of God, though you're set in the midst, and even though you were church of God and you're set in the midst, you're not church of God anymore, even though you have not left the congregation. Amen. I mean, church of God is in the spirit, and if you're not in the spirit, you're not in the church. Amen. Amen. If your spirit is not stirred to serve God and cause you to actually do it and refrain from those things which the spirit against, you're not in church of God. Amen. And we're just going to like say it like it is. And, uh, my attitude is, listen, I sure hate to see the congregation is smaller than it is since we would like to see some folks getting saved. But the thought is if we have to eliminate uh, the equivalent of everybody on that side and this side serve God, we'd be better off. Or let some on this side feel bad, I say, if we had to eliminate the equivalent of everybody on this side and this side be the church of God, we'd have more power and glory than we have with all these hanger-ons. All these new farmers, not going performers. Amen. Mormons, Mormons, yeah. Amen. We'd be better off. So we just need to stir our hearts up that we're going to serve God. If we have to do it with tears, we're going to be faithful. We're going to be strong. We're going to be mighty. We're going to show the world what we're supposed to show the world. We're light to the world what salvation really is. Amen. We're not just church uh, among churches, but the God, the church that God set up, is to be an example of power, might, thank God, and light in this present world. Amen. Amen. And we don't get to the place where we're just messing around. But just like our preaching up here. We can get up here and just preach and preach and preach and God said, I didn't hear no messages down in Grand Avenue today. Awful quiet down there. I didn't hear a thing today. What happened to the message? Well, nobody got it down there, I guess. They didn't pray. Nobody knew what to preach. So they got up and talked. And they talked real loud, but it wasn't really the message. I, all I heard was silence. We can get to the place in the ministry and in the pews where we have left off the Spirit of God, and therefore God is ignoring us, and we're not getting nothing done. Amen. So the vials need to be poured out, because if we don't pour them out, certain folks are going to fall asleep and bring down the standard. Yeah. Certain people are going to take a uh, look over the fence and see something over there that they left and they're going to embrace it again. Amen. We come out of Babylon, we're not going back. Amen. Amen. Now, some say you're not going back, but you don't have to go back by your feet. You don't have to go back to a Babylon congregation. You can go back to Babylon by being careless in your living. Amen. By holding out and desiring something that you have no business with, you turn to Babylon. Because that's all Babylon does. She does what she wants to do. She has set up her own rules. Amen. Sin if you want to, as long as it don't come uh, in the newspaper. Amen. But God's eyes go to and fro in the dark, and he sees the evil there. And therefore the Spirit of God wants that which is done in the dark revealed in the uh, shot it from the housetop. Amen. And if you have an attitude that you'll do whatever you want to do, and we cross your, your predicament tonight, we're going to shout it right from here. And your thought is to get it fixed. Your thought is to get it fixed. Any time you love pleasure more than you love God, you're going to hinder the church. Any time you want your way more than you want to do God's way and get the glory in your soul where you can get your hand up, amen, you're a hindrance to the congregation. Yeah. Right. Amen. Any time that you want to fall short and feel like we ought to accept it and nobody ought to say anything about it, you're a hindrance. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm going to tell you there's some things you've been told not to do and you better quit doing them. Amen. amen. If that's what you're doing. I mean, we don't need any long silences in, the, in this congregation. Amen. We don't need uh, folks uh, falling asleep feeling like they're all right. We don't need anybody up singing when they know their attitude's not right. Amen. That's right. And that goes in uh, both choirs and all groups and special singers. If your heart not right, your attitude's not right, you don't love truth, just keep your seat. Amen. Amen. And we won't sing. Amen. We don't have anything to sing about no how. Thank God if we can't follow God fully. Amen. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. River Euphrates is kindred, and shall we say it's comparable to the river of life that flows from the throne of God. 
But this is a, a, a river of death that flows from paganistic practices or self-will homemade gods or homemade religion. Amen. And he poured out his vial or judgment upon homemade religion or this uh, river that flowed through the city of Babylon. Amen. And held the people of God in bondage. They poured the vial out. In other words, preached the gospel, prayed down and laid the judgments of the line and righteousness of the blood up till the folks were sitting out in false religion. They made them scream and holler because they did not appreciate you knocking our church like that. Right. But they poured the vial of God's wrath. And the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, amen, and uncleanness, and all those that hold the truth and righteousness. God said, pour the vial out on them. His wrath is revealed. God is not putting up, thank God, with just any old kind of worship. God said, not worship at all. And that's a, uh, what got the children of Israel in trouble, is that because they left off to worship the true God, which required, amen, something in their heart. And they began to set up gods of their own because it was easier. They began to take the heathen God because there was no, not much required of the heart. Amen. All it was a form. And they would rather bow down to Baal than they would bow down to the most high God who was looking in their hearts. Right. And, but they decided that it was going to go the way of the easy way. And I'm going to tell you, if you go out from under the judgments of God and go down to what you call some easy way, don't forget that God does not accept it. Amen. Amen. Don't forget you're going to hell. It's just the same as if you had went down, amen, the blues or over there to some other bear joint, amen, the, the owl bar somewhere and sit down and have you a good time. Because if you don't worship God in the spirit and in the truth, he don't care whether you try to worship him or not. He's not going to accept you. Not going to accept you. just as lost. Matter of fact, you'd be better off sitting down at the owl bar. Because at least you wouldn't be deceived. He poured his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Or the spirit of Babylon. Amen. That which removes Babylon. That which caused the people to flow. They got in their spirit. He poured judgments of God, the word of God, upon it. And that's the job of every last saint in here is to pour the vial on Babylon. Amen. When you see where they're wrong. When you see where Babylon is out of the spirit, and she is. And at whatever her practices are, and they try to push it off on the saints. And try to make it look like we're okay and we're saved. Uh, and you go down there to their uh, funerals if you go. And you hear them talking big things and praising God. And get worshiping Him in a, a, in a mighty way. And tell them how good God is. But if you'd ask them, well, how good are you? None is good, they say. But the scripture let us know Barnabas was a good man. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And others are good. Yes. Amen. If you're in Christ, you're good. Right. Amen. The opposite of good is bad. Right. And the way you bad folks in heaven. Amen. So come on. Pour the vial upon the great river Euphrates. Uh-huh. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the king of the east might be prepared. Amen. The way of the king of the east, when you dry up the river, that means your doctrine is hot enough that they got to shut their mouth. Because if you remember that the, when uh, Jesus was telling the woman at the world, uh, at the well, yes, yeah, she was the world, that, listen, if you believe on me, as the scripture has said, yeah. out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. In other words, there come forth a testimony that other folk can get a drink from you. My, that was a good testimony. I wish I had it like that young man has it. I wish I had salvation like that young woman has it. I wish I believed like she believed it. Lord, help me. And they may even come under conviction and come to church and, and want to get saved. But he said, if you believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow testimonies and praise and glory and thanks uh, where folks can get a drink that are all dry in their soul. All right, but he said when they poured the vial out on the great river Euphrates, it dried up the testimonies. Right. Amen. And that's what, just what we need to do. People that are testifying, they're saying, you know, they're living in sin. You need to tell them either committed sin or the devil. Amen. The folks come out and tell you how saved they are. And they got on big rings. They got on long necklaces. And they talk about speaking in tongues and shouting in the Holy Ghost. Right. You try to work right there. Listen so here now. Thank God. God don't have Jezebel in this church. Amen. 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 God don't have around folks trying to attract attention to themselves. Trying to see how pretty you are. Don't you know God said he'll beautify me for salvation? You don't need all them pearls and jewels and things. Did you, oh, who do you think you are anyhow, God? You want to be worshipped? Why are you attracting attention? Come on, drive the testimony. Well, where do you get that from? Don't you be telling me that. Listen, Peter, tell me. Amen. It's not the putting on the power of the cost they raise. Amen. Amen. It's the hidden man in the heart. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. 
Amen. That's the scripture, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So you dry up the river. Amen. By pouring out judgments. And judgments means wrath. And wrath, of course, means actually condemnation of what you're doing. That's what judgment is. Condemnation of what you're doing. And it must come by judgment, by right thinking concerning an understanding of the scriptures. Amen. All right. So he said uh, he poured it out upon the river and dried it up. And when they dried it up, they made a way for the two kings of the east. Now the king of the east was knowledge and understanding which was typified by Cyrus and Darius, who let the saints of God go free out of Babylon natural. So when you dry the river up and cause them to shut their mouth long enough, they can get some knowledge and some understanding of what the will of God is. But as long as they're out talking to you, as long as they're just running and rabbling and going on, you can't help them. You got to dry them up. Uh-huh. Lord help us. Now, in the process, don't you get dried up. Amen. Amen. Let's have some water when we go. And have some fire when we go. Water where water belongs and fire where fire belongs. In this case, we need some fire. So the six field ministry, of course, were able to uh, bring in a great unity and shaking because they stuck right with the word of God and did not deviate. They did not have to make up excuses while they were laying down judgment. Well, what are you doing with them tight pants on? <laughs> Why? Well, you can't say it's not in what you wear because that's what you're preaching. So you dry it up, shut up, and go home and change your clothes. Pray and ask the Lord to forgive you because what you wear is see-throughs. Lord. Saints of God do not wear see-throughs. Amen. Saints of God, brethren, listen, them Levi's are designed to be tight and you'd be better to off without them probably. Amen. And I'm not telling you you can't wear Levi's, but I'm going to tell you they were, they, they're close cut. And if you can't wear and be loose enough that you're decent, leave them off. Leave them off. Leave them off. Get you some trousers where you can be a saint in them. That's right. See, so now, if that's what the vial is, I don't hear no more of it. Well, that's what Babylon said. That's what Babylon said. We don't hear no more of that. All right, and we'll keep our hair cut, and we'll look nice. Amen. So if you run against some old long-haired, fuzzy fella, that you can tell him that God's not pleased with that. And he wants to have a look at you. He poured out the vial of the judgments of God or the word of God on what they were doing because they were not pleasing God because they were violating the word of God. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. All right, and the dragon, of course, was the old paganistic religion, amen, that was on the scene when Jesus came. He was on the scene when the apostles preached. They worshiped God's made with hands. You know about the Greeks and the Romans. This is the Roman Empire, the dragon. Amen. Which is symbolic of pagan worship or idol worship. They poured out on the dragon and on the beast and on the false prophets. All their religions, of course, were contrary to what God teached. Contrary to the maker of heaven and earth. Contrary to that which we, the gospel which Christ brought. And they poured the vial of the wrath of God upon it. And when they poured it out and dried it up, out came three unclean spirits. And I'm going to tell you, you start pouring out judgment on somebody, amen, when they're wrong, and you're going to see an unclean spirit. Amen. They're going to fight for that thing. They're going to like a rat and fight. Amen. You see, you chop a rat and get him caught. He'll get on his back feet and fight. Amen. That's an unclean spirit showing. First is love, love, love. Let us get along. Let us understand all churches of God's church. And we're glad to have you over, brother. Uh, come on in, uh, brother. And you come on in and sit down. And you begin to tell them. Thank God what God done for you. And how he saved you from your sin. And how you don't have to smoke. And how you don't have to dirty joke. And how you don't have to lie and steal. And, and tell them how you feel. A glad be in service. And thank God for the preaching of God. Thank God that I don't have a one wife. And... Thank God that's all I need, and uh, I don't think anybody else needs one either, according to the scriptures. And after a while, you're going to see a spirit rise up. Amen. Especially if you're dealing with some of these folks who pride themselves in their testimony. You're going to see their spirit rise up, and I'll tell you, it's not going to be a clean one either. It's not going to be a pleasant spirit. Pouring out wrath. You all talking about other people's religion. You all not be knocking folks. I think that's evil. I believe that's evil. You're around talking about other people's religion. But what kind of religion do you have? But now if you're a Mohammed, then I'll just tell you, well, I don't believe in Muhammad. But don't tell me you're a Christian. Because if you do, I got you. 
Right here. Right here. You're claiming under false pretenses. You claim to be a Christian when the Lord said, Christ himself said, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing I say? And that goes for every last one of us. Why do we call him Lord, Lord, and do not the thing what he's saying? Now you can obey those that have rule over here, and what we're saying is, listen, on weekdays, at least you sisters and brethren need to be home at midnight. Amen. 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 Listen, I don't see an education running the streets after midnight. Well, these young folks have got to get up and go to work more. Even if you don't have to go to work, that's an awful hour for young women to be out on the streets. Amen. Amen. Now that is the judgment. And the parents should not be wondering where you are. I don't care if you are 21 or 22. Amen. You wives don't need to be out on the street after midnight. Amen. Brothers don't need to be out on the street after midnight. That's something definitely to do. Maybe you are praying for the sick. Well, then, all right. We can understand that. But well, sometimes you're out there just chatting and talking. And it's good for you to call home if you're going to be detained. Because the, your adversary, the devil, walketh about. Now, let's go get to the place where we're so grown. We don't ever get so grown, we don't need to consider one another. That's right. Brother Butler, I got no business on the street after midnight. Unless he's out there for the Lord. Or he's detained unavoidably. Un That's right. That's right. There's a lot of things going on in that world. Not only that, what is it that we can't do before midnight that we have to wait till we do afterwards? What is it that we're having so much fun that we can't stop and have prayer and go home? Okay, you said, now wait a minute now. Now you don't think like a Baptist now. Don't start thinking about the Memphis. This is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm blah, 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 blah. All right. And you have no business coupling off out there unless you're already engaged to marry just about. That's right. Come on now, we're going to help you here. Kind of help you out a little bit. Kind of help you out a little bit. Your adversary! He's warring against you. Amen. And there's nothing so personal and so private that you have to stand uh, and stay in someone's company for a couple of hours all alone and look in their eyes. Or whatever else. Or look at TV. Oh, that's not what we're doing. Oh, how does a thought like that come from? You better be careful. You better be careful. There are plenty of people off watching TV and don't think anything wrong with it. Now don't you get to the place where you don't think it is. Not that I think you're doing that, but I just want you to get the sobriety and seriousness of disobeying good counsel. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Came out of the mouth. In other words, we're talking about a spirit of, uh, uh, they come from the mouth, a testimony. They come out of the mouth. It was coming out of the mouth. Whatever people say, you don't have to believe it. Amen. And out of the mouth of the false prophet, and if you sit around and lay jump, you'll see, amen, the false prophets what, have unclean spirits. Yes, they do. They talk sweet, but the scripture said it's unclean. It's unclean. That's why we don't involve ourselves with them, or we'll be that way. For they are the spirits of devils. The spirits of devils. I've been in a mess, and I've heard these folks preach. And I was in the barber shop, and they was asking me, well, why don't you ministers catch to get together? And why can't you do something for the community? Do you know such and such a preacher? I says, I don't know him. Well, see, that's what I say about you preachers. You all don't work together. You understand. Why don't you do this? I said, I don't have any confidence in them, brother. And they began to stell the dirt that some of them had done and how they had told some of them to attend the business and how they had uh, done this and all the things other preachers done. And I said, now, see, y'all asked me why I don't have anything to do with them. And you sit up here and talk about them yourself. False prophets. False prophets got the folks trapped in. They have not told them that except a man repented can I see God. Then I told them follow the peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Then I told them there's only one church. Amen. It's the church of God is built on the rock. It's the church that God built. 
They have not told them, thank God, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. They have not told them, thank God, that if we uh, uh, sin willfully after we've come to the knowledge of truth, that there's no more sacrifice for sin. They are not told them that there's a dress code that the saints of God must keep. Amen. They are not told them, thank God, that there's a marriage behavior that wives and husbands have to keep. They are not told them that he that doeth evil shall receive for the evil that he done. They are not told them that if you smoke, you defile in your body and God's going to destroy you. They are not told them these things. They're false prophets. They're hirelings going after the cash and not after the souls of men. But yet, in the process, souls of men are lost. False prophets. Unclean spirits. Unclean spirits. Riding around, trying to be cool. Amen. Slow, staggering across, amen, in the pulpits and trying to be cool and trying to wow the folks and throw it on capes and coming out and teaching and all that kind of loose anything to put on a show for the people and their souls on the way to hell. <laughs> False prophets. Unclean spirits. For they are the spirits of devils. Call themselves ministers of God, but he said they're spirits of devils. Call themselves saints, call themselves Christians, call themselves reverend and right reverend. But he said there's a spirit of devils. Why the devil defending himself. The devil makes way for him to work. I mean, you go out there and look, and I'm just telling you the truth. If you don't believe it, that's just too bad for you. And if this gets on your nerves, it's too bad for you. But the false prophets are abounding out there, even under the name of Church of God. Yes. That's right. We'll not tell a man the truth. We'll not enter into the gate, and we'll not suffer those that would enter in. To enter in. I have no power over the devil, whatever. But are agents of the same. Because the word said they are spirits of devils. Working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world, all over the world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. There is a day where God is going to put the saints in battle. There's a day when he spoke of white horses. Amen. I saw the white horse. What did he say? How did it look? And he was dressed in a vesture, dripped in blood, and rode upon a white horse, and on his thigh was written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And they followed, the armies of God followed him in heaven. The great day of the Lord God Almighty is what the, uh, God is gathering. Amen. His folks together are going to stand against the false prophets uh, uh, at, at Armageddon. Now some people are get, trying to get you to think that we, the Armageddon is going to be fought overseas somewhere. That it's going to be fought out in the middle of somewhere in the wilderness where it was. But that was only a type where it was fought over there. But that's not where it's going to be. It's going to be fought in the spirit. And if your spirit's not right, you're going to fight the saints. If your spirit's not right, you're going to despise the whiteness of the horses. Amen. If your spirit's not right, you're going to be a hindrance and a stumbling block. Amen. Why? Because you sit among the saints and you're not a saint. You are of a different color. And the armies that were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Uh-huh. Let's look here in this uh, 19th chapter. Uh-huh. Let's remember the 7th verse. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Now this is the captain of the Lord's host. Joshua Tip uh, uh, met him. Amen. Back in his day, when he's about to go into that uh, uh, great battle that they were uh, initiating them in the uh, in the Canaan land, praise God! He said, "Come over there." And he said, "Who are you?" He saw a man with his sword drawn, and he said, "I'm the captain of the Lord's host." And Joshua fell down to worship him. Now Joshua was the only captain around far, as we know, but there was another captain came on. There was captain of the captain. Amen. And he took his feet off and worshipped him. We have a captain and Lord's host that's leading in the battle and against all falseness and all wrongdoing. And I saw heaven open, and he's not talking about the literal heavens at all. He's talking about the heaven of the vision. And behold, a white horse. Now white denotes holiness. White denotes right. Yeah. Now I know the false prophets got it written down that this is the Antichrist, but he's just telling a lie. This is Christ. Not the Antichrist. Uh -huh. The white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, and that's the only way, that he ju that judge and make war. Now saints, righteousness is the only way we can judge and make war. Don't judge after the seeing of our eyes, but judge after the writing of this book. 
They got under the spirit of truth we judge. Amen. We don't fight fighting the saints because they may be a little off in your eyes. We do not stand up and backbite, amen, someone because they see that they sung that song in self. No, we do not do that. We pray for them. We pray for them. And we try to encourage them. Amen. Lest they do turn aside because of discouragement. But he says, it, and is I said upon him, it's called faithful and true and in righteousness that they judge and make war. That's why we know that all folks that are not right, all folks who are living in sin, all churches who deny the holiness of the life of the saint of God, they cannot be fighting on the Lord's side. Because in righteousness does the judge make war. Jehovah's Witness can't join in this. They have to be fought against. Why? Because they're sinners. Roman Catholics are not involved on white horses. Why? Because they got black ones and pale ones. But with the saints of God are to run mount up on white horses. Yes. And the only way to keep your horse white, in the morning they went forth on white horses. In the evening they go forth on white horses. Here you see the saints of God as they were coming forth to fight war out of Babylon. Just under the earthquake and the earthquake, which was brought on by the uh, mighty preaching of God's word, it shook Babylon to where light came. They dried up some folks' uh, testimony. And in this uh, light truth came to them, and they came out all white horses. Now when Brother Robert and Sister Connie and all come out, they came out on white horses. In other words, a horse is a type of warfare. And if you can't come out fighting what you came out of, then you should stay there until you get it. Amen. Amen. We don't want you over here, man, getting mad every time somebody says something about baptism, Methodism. Every time somebody say, a oh, church got sanctified, church got fire baptized, church got on the rock, and Jesus Christ the leader, and all that right. kind of church. <laughs> all the blasphemous names that the folks have set up on their buildings. Amen. And living like the devil and on the job they can't trust them. Mouths are not clean and the practices aren't evil. Ain't got one. Because when you come out and ain't got right to pay the horse, you'd be better off to stay down there. <laughs> we don't want red pale horses getting in among the white horses. We have to kick him every now and then, put hoof prints on his thigh. Hey, Amen. Get him change colors, maybe. When we're talking about war tonight, Amen. Upon the white, now he's talking about against the battle of the great day. And we're talking about the activities of the great day of the Lord's battle. And that's why we can't afford to be just lukewarm. That's why we can't afford to be just a sort of shady toward Babylon. We cannot say, well, there's some good people over there. So what? As long as they're over there, we cannot embrace them as being saints of God. Although there are saints, there may be some saints there. But that's not helping. For the word said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Our God is calling his people and saying, Come out from among them. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. Well, Jesus, he's a good God. I don't think you ought to be talking about religion. In righteousness, he judge and he make war. Amen. God, listen, Jesus is a wife. He's the captain of the Lord's army. Thank God when there's something wrong, he fire an arrow at it. Thank God. And today we throw a grenade at it and blow it apart. By the grace of God. His eyes were the flame of fire. Why? He's angry with the false prophets. He's angry with the wickets that, is, uh, that are caught between walls and call themselves saints and singing songs of praise and their hearts are black and their eyes and God are full of adultery. Their minds are all crowded up with wrongdoing. Their practices are not to be recommended. They're not, as it were, uh, examples to the world for those who would like to make heaven. Lord. And therefore his eyes are aflame because they call themselves his followers Christians. And his eyes are aflame. Saints of God are supposed to have the same attitude because of false worship. We ought to get angry. We ought to get upset. Amen. We go to around and see these folks doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. We ought to get eyes of fire instead of saying, well. His eyes were the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Amen. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with vesture, dipped in blood, which name was called the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. Saints, when we go into battle, we go in with the Word of God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Thank God, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. When we go into battle, let's go with the word. Thank God, we don't want to 
God says, well, I think, because if you do, you might be ashamed in the battle. But he said, study it. Praise God to show yourself to prove to God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of God. Cutting on the left hand and cutting on the right. Praise God and getting the victory for God and bringing souls out. Why are souls being saved? Somebody's not, not studying. Somebody's not showing themselves to prove to God. Somebody's getting defeated in the battle. Somebody's backing down in the face of the prophet. Uh, the false prophet out there. So I'm backing down. Thank God I want to get these false folks come around. Talking about uh, tongues. Uh, you can't be saved unless you speak in tongues at least once. Y'all tell me I speak in tongues none. I know I'm saved. How do you know you are? Thank God, I done. Thank God the tongue I got is sufficient to praise God with and also to refrain from evil with. Amen. Amen. Speaking in no tongues. Amen. So just a sign of the devil. Thank God if you had the, if you had the Holy Ghost you wouldn't have around here trying to fake him with tongues. Father, I know the Holy Ghost was tongues of fire, but it surely wasn't that tongue you got. Lord, have mercy upon us. And let's be sweet about it. Ha. Lord, help us. They know how to do it. There's one thing in knocking him down, but let's pick him back up. For the Lord. Many people are more interested in knocking him down than they are in rescuing him after they've done that. Amen. So the Lord, help us. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven. Now we know the armies are made up of God's armies, the ride the white horses are made up of saints of God. Because Paul told Timothy, he said, fight is not fight of faith, they have uh, a hold on eternal life. All right, another place he said that the Almighty's war, a good warfare. And then he said he did uh, uh, war the entanglement of not in the thing, affairs of this life, that he might be a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is leading and riding on the white horse. Who do you think is following him? Folks like Timothy. Folks like Asaiah. Uh, folks like uh, 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 these folks over here if they're serving the Lord. Folks like these fellows along here serving the Lord. Praise God, they're following him. We're not following, they got mad man right in opinion. We're not following camp meeting leaders. We're not following uh, ideas of pitch. We're not following sex and creed. We're not following after traditions and all that foolishness. We're going to follow the Lamb. Yeah. Thank God we're going to follow him and stay on the white horse too. Thank God we're going to get off the white horse trying to follow the Lamb. We don't have to get out the and, and, and do anything wrong to try to fight for God. They want to tell one lie. Thank God to support the truth. Man. No, sir. They follow him on white horses. What, you, what, kind of, what color is your horse? Check down every now and then. He might be striped. Spotted. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now what is fine linen, saints? The word said it is the righteousness of saints. All right, so they're woe, as the songwriter said in heaven, let us woe it above, the righteousness of saints. All right, so we have to be right ourselves. For how can you say that a dog is wrong if you think? I mean, how can you say thou shalt not steal when you are a thief? I mean, how can you say that adultery is wrong when you're committed? I mean, how can you say that man only have one wife and you got three? Or two? Well, how can you preach the word of God if you're not standing in the light yourself? How can you uh, condemn someone that's standing in the dark? That's right. We don't go down and fellowship battling to get folks out. In the first place, they want to know, well, if this is so bad, what are you doing down here? Now, I come down to get you. Yeah, but while you're down here, you are down here and you did sing for us. Yes, sir, I did see you go up and congratulate the preacher and told him it was a good message. Now, when we go down to Babylon, we go up and tell the preacher it was a good message. I've heard some interesting messages preached by Babylonians. I've heard them. But I did not hear it was silence as far as heaven's concerned because it did not cover the right territory. Now, we can preach a rousing message if we stay off the folks' feet. Oh yeah, I heard them just preach the praises of God, just praising God, praising God. They're going to hell for that too. You tell them how good God is, but yet you ain't good. You tell them how wonderful God is, but yet you're not wonderful. You tell them what a great, <laughs> mighty God we serve. Thank God, but you're not too mighty against sin. Lord, have mercy upon us. Now listen, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Now what is a sharp sword that went out of his mouth? I believe we heard that in the morning. Hebrews 4 and 12. So I turn over to Hebrews, one of you young folks, and give me Hebrews 4 and 12. A sharp sword went out of his mouth. And with this, he got to get strike the nations off. Is that what it says here? I don't think it does. But nevertheless, that scripture said anyhow. And out of his mouth went a sharp sword. 
that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he tread the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. See, some people have not really got to their mind yet that false religion is poison. False religion is death to the ones that embody it, yes. those that in partake of it. This false religion is hellfire. Thank God if you, may, if you retain, they got your membership there and your spirit there. God is definitely against false religion. What he did was warn the, of the, as a sign of coming, folk beware of false prophets. And they ask me, beware of false prophets. It's a sign of his coming. And we got more preachers now today, and you know that the mighty majority of them are false prophets. Cannot produce holiness in their life or anybody else's. All right, what does it say? What is the Lord? What is the Lord? Who got it? What, it's just one thing you have. All right. Yes. Wait a minute, you're going too fast. Get a little louder. Yes. 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 This is what they. This is what they had. When he comes by on his white horse, he had a sword sharper than any sword. Amen. It was quick and it was powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. This violent thunder of the soul and the spirit, and is a discerner of the heart. Now, how the fuck you gonna stand? You gonna how the fuck gonna stand before a spirit like that riding on a white horse? The best thing you can do there is just hypocrite and lie. Because he'd already discerned your spirit. He already separated the soul. Thank God he went into the marrow. Man, and his sword is sharper than yours. Thank God. So help us with the sword, Lord. That he should, with it, he should smite his nation and would rule them with a rod of iron. Now, many people think God's got a rubber, a rubber rod. Thank God they think they got one of them uh, a taffy rods or something like that. The way they can just do anything they want to with the rod. But I'm going to tell you, he said, a rod of iron, he'll whip you with it, it don't bend. God, it don't bend. You don't bend the word of God. If forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Alright. So if the Lord is going to tread the rind for us, uh-huh. And he tread up a wine press, and that is what they would dump the clusters in. Now we got plenty of clusters out there. We got the Lutheran cluster. There, we got the Catholic clusters. And we got the uh, let me see the Mormon clusters, and we got the Men uh, Mennonite clusters, and we got the Seven Day Adventist clusters. You just reach up the vine and right, the vine and the earth. Amen. Just reach up on the vine and the earth, and he said it's ripe and ready. Thank God. Cast in the soil of the sickle and reap. And then reach up here and get them all right off the vine here, and put them right here in the wine press, and work them over when they feed. Now, what's the feed of the type of? Uh, the feet. Show the preparation of the gospel. So what we do is take the clusters and wear them out. Thank God, just lay it on them. And saints get mad when you're talking. You want to the wine press, you have to try it outside of the city. You got to use it in, in, in Zion, but you can't, sure can't use it down in Babylon the city. They won't let you. Oh, wait a minute, brother, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe you're out of order. Uh, uh, if you, hold on, would you please, you're out of order. Amen. You ever try to tell them to give me a test one about how the Lord stays? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you got to get out. It's got to be tried without the city. That's why I wonder when I see church of God preachers say they're down in Babylon preaching. Especially when we're talking about sick Babylon. Because they're not going to preach down there long. Anointed message would not be accepted down in Babylon. It would not be accepted. Thank you know that. I'm going to tell you, there's some folks in the congregation here that don't accept the anointed message of judgment of God. There may be some right here that have problems. I mean, they be uh, uh, choking on it. <laughs> Lay it up for a while. Uh, and after a while, they forget it. Leave it laying up, too. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Now, he's talking about a spiritual warfare. Now, do you let people uh, convince you or tell you that there's going to be a natural warfare at Armageddon? Forget it. Oh, uh, why? He said they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears and pruning hooks, and neither, and neither shall they learn war anymore. God is not going to have his saints. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not against the place. They're not natural. They're against...
Oh, no, don't need that. We're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about the spiritual sword. Amen. The divine from thunder. Praise God. The spirit from the soul. Now, now we can get the spirit from the soul, we can save a man. As long as he persists in his ungodly spirit, you can't get to save his soul. The Lord help us. We didn't get through yet, did we? Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth, a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. All right, now we're talking about Armageddon, and it's a battle against what's wrong. But the thought is here, saints, we have to get right. With righteousness does he make war. I mean, don't you remember when we were zealous to go out and witness? Zealous to go out and take the word? Zealous to go out and stand against those that are wrong? Now, how are you going to be right as long as you're wrong? Did you ever understand? Or he, well, he's right wrong. Is he right or wrong? He's both. Is he saved or unsaved? Well, he's just a sinner. Save of grace. <clears throat> there are no sinners saved by grace. If you are a sinner, you're not saved. And if you're saved, you're not a sinner. I was a sinner. But you say, I am a sinner, and the only difference between me and what I was is grace. That is to say that God is condoning my sins. That is to say that if any man be in Christ, he's not a new creature. He's the old creature saved by grace. But the scripture definitely tell me, except a man be converted. Which means I'm not the old fellow I used to be. And it's not just grace that's the difference, but it's a change. Yeah. Amen. For he says, circumcision availeth nothing, neither unsaved concession, but a new creature. So I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner. And I'm saved, I am saved by grace. I was a sinner, and I'm saved by grace. But I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I'm not a Baptist who say sin you must. I'm not a Catholic who say and at the hour of our death. See? I'm not a Jehovah Witness, but I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. What about you? Are you a sinner saved by grace? You just deceived. You deceived and the grace that's not on you. The wrath of God is against you. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Saints, thank God for the evening light sun. And he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, we need a ministry, thank God, that's going to stand in the sun. There's no way in the world Reverend Richardson could fit this batter. Why? Because he's bleeding. Folks smoking, he said, well, they, we too good, buddy. Reverend Richardson. Don't you know this man's preaching? I smoke it. He's so thin and he seems to be a pillar in the community. People really like him. Why don't you tell him about them cigarettes? You're going to lay up in that damn cancer. Ah, how you tell him? I'm way too close. Now, you can tell that man wasn't standing in the sun. He wasn't standing in the sun. No, sir, he was standing back in the shadows. He's probably farther back in the shadows than the one he should have been correct. Mm. That's right. I mean, what did he do? What is the ministry? What is the comfort for anyhow? Cry out! Spare not! I don't care how close you are to him. When you get so close to someone that you cannot tell them when they're wrong, you're too close. Amen. You're too close. Familiarity breeds contempt. You're too familiar. I mean, you shouldn't get so close to your wife or your husband that you cannot tell them when they're wrong. Right. Even if they don't like it and it brings a coolness in the house for three weeks. I hope it don't. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Now since it's getting late, I'll just terminate some of these things and just leave it all. But I want to get to this point right here. That we cannot fight in this war if we cannot take a clear stand. If we cannot take a clear stand, then where the saints know where you're standing, you know of not much use in the war. That's right. I would want to go in combat with a backstab off. I wouldn't want to go in combat with someone who has skipped his training. Yeah. Gone in town and eating hot dogs and, and, and uh, pop ill with the PX instead of sitting out there eating those meals that they prepared to make you strong. Those folks are coming to take that three mile march, that 15 mile march and they hide out in the woods somewhere and skip it. 
They skip their training. They do all kind of crooked things while they're in base. And then they want to go in battle with me. Can't even hold the rifle up right. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to trust him to watch the camp while I'm sleeping. Out there among those that are after my life. So things we have to be trustworthy to fight in this army. Amen. You must be a prayer warrior before you can be a combat warrior. If you're going to face the enemy, you're going to have to yoke up with God from time to time and get something for our soul. That's why you can't go into battle unequipped. If you can't take admonition, you're going to be scattered when the enemy starts firing his darts. That's right. If you can't take instruction, you're going to be the one in the wrong end and you're going to give away the position of the, right, of the team. If you can't really be disciplined enough to go through your training and take the reading of the word and the preaching of the word and whatnot, you're going to be the one to let the enemy in the camp. You're going to be the one who lets the devil come in and discourage the saints. You're going to be the one that gets caught up in some kind of a affair out there that's going to bring a reproach. You're the one that's going to be backslid and walking the streets out there advertising that God can't keep you. You're going to be the one that will say that we're like, this is the way those folks are on Grand Avenue. Did she go to your church? Did she go to your church? No, she does not come to my church. Did, well, she was in your church. She told me she was there. She's not in our church now, but she told me she went to Grand Avenue. She said she was Church of God. I know she said that. She used to be with us, but she's not with us no more. I saw two of your young people parked on McDonald's lot back there where the light was burned out. I know it was your car because my sister knows her and she said that was her car and his car was parked beside her car and they were both in the same car. Now what are you, you telling me about the standards you all hold in Grand Avenue? How come I see your young people running the streets 130? Oh. You, you're not a disciplined soldier. You're not a disciplined soldier. You're giving away the position. You're bringing a reproach. You let the enemy shoot at you. let them hit home with some darts. Uh huh. No, sir, you're not ready to follow nobody in heaven. Why? Because you're not spending enough time on your knees. You're not praying enough. Thank God you're not yoking up with God. You're not hooking up and getting some power in your life. I mean, you've forgotten about prayer. You're too busy trying to make it out in the street. I mean, you haven't had time. You get out and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me today. And I'm still breathing and praise the Lord goodbye. <laughs> hey, hey, see, you up. Books are getting rusty, dusty. Uh -huh. Prayer. Had to be prodded to pray. You can't really pray. Why? Because you haven't practiced. I wonder brothers said they was home practicing shouting because they felt God gonna give them the victory. They went home and shout something upstairs. And I said, wonder what's going on. The house is shaking. I'm practicing. What for? God gonna give me the victory. I'm gonna shout. I'm getting ready. Amen. You all tell me you all saying you haven't practiced shouting yet? You don't expect the victory, do you? You ought to go home and practice shout. <laughs> sure, you young folks that have shouted. The Lord has really put the fire in your soul and lift you off your seat. Yeah, you ought to go home and practice shout. Think about saying it. You'll be like your man who bought some milk bucket and over a cow and went and bought milk bucket. Glory that cow. That's right. You all planning to really uh, be what God wants you to do? Go home and practice shout. But don't shout till God sent it. <laughs> when you get to church, say, thank God answered my prayer. No, we're not talking about hypocrite neither. Now, hypocrites are going to be exposed. If the saints pray like they ought to and live like they ought to, a hypocrite is not going to get away with what he's doing in the church of God. He's not going to get away. He's going to be exposed and in an embarrassing situation probably. Amen. And they're going to be exposed. And we're not going to condone hypocrisy. But faith. Word of God is quick and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We're not playing. Thank God would. When we're dealing with God, we are dealing with someone who can take care of us in a resolute way and would be 
finally taken care of. If you can't take a clear, a clear stand for the church of God, then of course you cannot fight on the church of God. Don't you remember Moses when he came out of the mountain? said, who's on the war side? Yeah. Amen. We're dealing with, the, with the, uh, those, what were those folks in name? That uh, challenged God and they had to open up to challenge Moses' leadership? Oh, yeah, correct. That's right. Amen. He told y'all, get over here, get over here. God will do a thing today. It's going to make you want us to. Woo, it's going to be something today. Get over here. All right. That's right. Who's on the Lord's side? Just make it. You got to take a stand if you're going to be on the Lord's side. Don't you know when they all was wondering who was right and who was wrong? And Moses, don't you tell me he's the only one God spoke to him. And the Miriam was against the different ones and all those false prophets. They had God spoke to Moses only. They had a big group over here, but they all stand around. When they come down, and say, who's on the Lord's side? People just say, well, I don't want to uh, offend uh, Corey and his buddies. Boys, I, better be, I don't know about Moses, and I don't know what to do. But Moses said, listen, who's on the Lord's side? Amen. Amen. When they came down out of the mountain there, and, uh, you know, they were down there uh, uh, worshiping the golden calf. Hey, who's on the Lord's side? I think I'm going to have to decide whose side you want. You say, well, I'm going to wait and see what happens, and then I'll choose up sides. You like be the ones that sink in the earth too when it opened up. That's right. You gotta be on the side of right. You know that. Common sense will tell you that. Uh-huh. If you're not decided on what side you are, that you're gonna stand for the church of God and lift her up because God's in it, then of course you can't add any strength to the fight. And you're a poor witness. Get home at night, time to pray. And the spiritual one among you say, well, I think it's, maybe we better break up. The spiritual one among you. And depart with prayer and when you go home, you'll have time to pray before you get in bed. You know why we rush in the morning, can't get ready? You know, I know you young folks, tearing through the house, ripping and running. Why? Because you slept till one hour before you're supposed to be on the job. You know, you got maybe 10 miles to drive. Can't find your clothes, can't find your shoes, and you're ripping and running, but you had plenty of time last night to lay out in the street. And now you slip up to where you just came, barely make it. And sometimes you have to ease it up over 60. Or if you work in town, you gotta get it over 35. And in residential areas, you're supposed to be driving 25. Good morning, Jesus. Well, thank you for the nice rest. I'll be blessed until I get them a job and I'll meet you there. <laughs> Gone. Why? Not settled yet. Not settled. Not settled. Amen. Have a good night's rest and have a good prayer in the morning and stay stirred up so you can sing for it. And that goes for the old folks too. All of us. We're in a battle and the devil's going to take you if he can. And if we had time to, we'd talk about spirits and how the devil is Overcoming people with spirits. Amen. If, if, if God, listen, if God permitted, we started to read that, but we didn't. But if God permitted, the enemy is working with spirits. And he get a spirit in you, you cannot help yourself. What you decide to do won't mean the hill beans. If once you've got a spirit, you cannot do it. See? So that's why we need to be careful about this backsliding business. People getting upset, getting weary, getting tired, losing their vision. Backslide on God. Decide I'm going to do what I want to do. Them people ain't telling me nothing. You don't get right uh, contentious and testy. You know, pull away the shoulder. Um, Sister, I've been concerned about you. How are you getting along? I can make it all right. Spirit. Spirit. They give to evil spirits. Stop it. Stop it. There's going to be a whole lot of spirit infested folks in these last days. As the truth increases, spiritual possession, devil possession is going to increase. Because people take a long stand against the truth, possession is going to start, a lot more possession is going to start taking place. You're going to wonder what's the matter with those folks. Didn't you used to go to church? Yeah, I used to go to church. Why don't you go anymore? I don't know. Leave me alone. Now we didn't get through, we're going to quit in how. So you have time to pray before you go to bed tonight. So you can get out, Lord help me. 
to have a right attitude toward this truth. God's not playing. He put up with false religion long as he, many, many years God has put up with false religion, but he always punished in the end those that embraced it. He always punished it. Even in the Jews who were, he gave them the religion, but they became false religionists while they had access to the truth. And he said, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all those that hold the truth and unrighteousness. That's right. So let us fear God. Keep his commandments. Let's fear God. He keeps us even to find out in our soul. That's right. Thank God. Even those here that are not saved, you still need to get saved. You just get your mind right. If I get saved, the Lord spare me long enough to get saved. I'm going to be saved in the church of God. Because I'm going to be saved hypocrite. There's no such person as a saved hypocrite. And you can't go down in the false worship knowing the truth like you do and still be saved. You can't do it. Saints of God is raised, children that are raised up here among the saints of God cannot go down to Babylon and feel justified. You know those folks are not living right. And that's not just to make you feel bad, but you cannot take the attitude of all things of the church of God or you do what you want to do and still call yourself church of God and that's the trouble with church uh, so-called of God now. There's too many people are doing what they want to do, not knowing that God is demanding holiness and right living out of each one of us. The Lord bless you to be faithful, help us all to stir ourselves up. Those who have individual personal problems at home, you know what they are. You know what they are. You talk with me about it or you talk with us about it, you talk with the ministers about it. Don't pretend like it's all right since you talk about it. Let's get the victory over it. Let's get the shout in the camp. Amen. Let's get praises in the tent. Praise God. Let's leave what God would have to do. Let's move up. Amen. God can do something for us. God will save who he will if we're all right. He can't he won't save everybody because everybody won't be saved. But he can save whom he will if we'll be a reception committee that can properly resent, re represent him. We need to properly represent the Lord. When they come, they need to learn righteousness. When they come, they need to see a right attitude. They don't need to see you young people wanting young people to get saved. They come and see the mouth poke out. They see somebody fussing. They see arguments among you. They see attitudes among you. They see this one. Cut this one up. And they'll be that up. This one won't say anything. They'll be back to in their heart. We have to properly represent the Lord. So young folks, they call yourself saved, pray. Pray. Don't hit your knees before you get the other on the floor of your suit. Let's be saved. Let's be in earnest. You know what happens to folks who don't pray because it's happening to most of you. It's happening to most of you. You know what happens to folks when they don't pray, don't you? Don't you all know what happens to you when you don't pray? Amen. If you have to get your watch out, set a minimum. Devil, I'm going for 15 minutes. Whatever you say. Now, I'm going to stay saved. Folks who won't pray, stray. Folks who don't want to be disciplined, you'll find out that they'll be undisciplined. And you cannot be a disciple unless you be disciplined. That's what a disciple is. You have to deny yourself. The scripture tells us that. Except a man deny himself and take up his cross daily, he cannot be my disciple. And if we're not Christ's disciple, don't you think it's Christ the one that's suffering? It's going to be us. Because when he comes back, he's coming back for his disciples. Well, I would never make it. We all want the rest of them to go to hell. Hmm? I don't want to go. I want the glory of the battle. Right? How about you? Right. Amen. David shouted for the battle. Thank God he didn't run from it. He said he stayed right in the middle of the war. He said he's